Hello, everyone, and welcome to Managing Linux Logins, Users, and Machines in Active Directory Part 2. In the previous episode, we discussed what the directory service is and what its benefits are. We also discussed what Active Directory, Microsoft Active Directory, or AD is. We set up our instance and joined a Windows VM to our domain. If you missed that episode, you can click on no notification up here. In this episode, we will look at AD's default authentication protocol, Kerberos, and we will go through the process of joining a Linux VM to our AD domain. So as was discussed in the previous episode, Active Domain, uh, Directory Domain Services, or AD for short, are hierarch hierarchical system by nature. With Forest being the other most container, and within each uh, forest, there will be more one or more domain. And domains are represented by domain controllers. So domain controllers are basically Windows servers, which are really the workhorse of the entire uh, AD system. And many components, services, and databases are hosted on a domain controller. But for our discussion, we'll just concentrate on computer repository, which has the list of all the computers that have joined Active Directory. So as computers join an Active Directory, they're registered with um, AD. Um, and those are the only ones that are able to actually authenticate um, and, join, and talk to Active Directory. And the other component that we'll concentrate on is Key Distribution Service, or KDC, which implements the Kerberos uh, protocol, authentication protocol. Kerberos is an industry standard client server authentication protocol. And KDC relies on two important services. One is authentication services, which as the name suggests, is authenticate the clients. Um, it has all the user IDs and passwords. And the other one is ticket granting services. So once a client is authenticated against KDC, then they are granted um, a ticket the, as proof of authentication for for future um, communication with um, KDC or Active Directory, they don't have to provide their user ID, uh, the password again, and that will be used as proof of authentication. And the other type of um, tickets are used for authorization purposes. For instance, a client wants to consume a service which is locked down, either on the same server or a different machine, then uh, those tickets. Um, are granted, so we enable um, the user to consume those resources. So let's see how authentication actually works in this uh, scenario. First, on the client machine, uh, Kerberos components will be installed. So uh, on the Windows machine, this is already installed. Um, for Linux, we need to go through the installation process and, and install the Kerberos client on, on, the, on the machine. And then let's say a user such as Joe wants to um, consume or connect to one of the services like this Linux server here. He will provide his user ID, which is joe at acme.pri, and sends it to the server. The server then challenges him and requests for password. Joe enters his password, and those user ID and password is sent to uh, the Kerberos client, which in turn, uses uh, an algorithm to create a hash of the password. And then the user ID and the hash of the password is sent to Active Directory or KDC for authentication. And the authentication services then gets that name uh, from, that inf uh, from the information that was sent and compares it to its database to ensure that that user is actually in um, the list of authenticated or authorized users or users that have been um, added to Active Directory. If the name is not found, then authentication fails at this moment, uh, at this point, and then the server will prompt Joe to enter his user ID again. And then the next thing that it does, assuming that now the name um, uh, is, is valid, then the authentication services uses uh, the password. It has access to the password of Joe and goes through the same algorithm to generate 
the hash of the password and compares these two. Again, if they don't match, authentication fails, and then the, the server will prompt Joe again to um, enter his password. And assuming that both user ID and password are valid, then TGT or um, Ticket Granting Services um, sends back, generates and sends back two um, tickets or messages. One contains the client slash TGS session key. So this is basically used as a proof of authentication by Joe. It needs to uh, connect um, AD again. And that key is encrypted by a hash of a, uh, the user's password, in Joe in this case. It also generates another ticket, and that contains client ID, client network address, ticket validity period. So these are issues um, are time sensitive. So they're only issued for a certain amount of time. And also includes a copy of this uh, key uh, client slash TGS ticket that we discussed here. So those are then sent back to the client. And at this point, client is authenticated. Again, the first key is used for as proof of authentication. If um, um, he um, John needs to authenticate to uh, contact uh, AD again, then the, he doesn't have to provide his password again. That will be used as proof of his password. And then this will be used if Joe needs to consume a service that is locked down either on the same server or anywhere in the domain, then this is the method of um, kind of using authorization. It's a little bit beyond this course, so I'm just kind of be aware that um, these two tickets are sent back to the client upon successful authentication. So at this point, everything is good and Joe is now logged into this server. So hopefully we are now familiar a little bit with Active Directory, how it works and how Kerberos authentication works. Um, so this is uh, now a good time to actually join our Linux machine. This is the machine that I'm logging right now. Um, I'm joining to Active Directory. So on line three, I'm going to save the IP address of this machine into a variable. Um, we want to log in later on once after we join the Active Directory domain. So I'm just going to save that for convenience. On line five and six, um, we want to rename the, the machine name um, and add the suffix of our domain, which is admin.pri. We want to add that to uh, the host name, to the machine name. So on line five, we're going to save um, .admin.pri in, in that variable called domain underscore suffix. And then on line six, new name will be the combination of the current host name and the uh, domain suffix. Okay, we're going to rename that a little bit later, but just kind of create uh, a, a variable to hold the new name. And then on line seven, um, eight and nine, uh, we want to make sure that our Linux is up to date. So make sure that you run this, up, upgrade and update your machine. And then on line 22, we need to install um, a few components are listed here before joining um, the, the domain. These are essential. So um, some of them are more of a helper um, um, modules, but the one that stands out is Realm D, which basically allows us to join our machine to the domain. SSSD, which stands for System Security Services uh, Daemon, and it actually provides uh, author authentication and authorization for external directory services such as Active Directory, um, domain services, and AD, um, ADCLI, which is basically the command line for Active Directory, so that this uh, machine will be able to, uh, to talk to Active Directory. So um, we need to install those. So I've already installed those. Um, I'm not going to run that, that again because it's already installed. I want to make sure you install this before um, acting, um, joining the, the machine to the domain. And then um, before joining uh, the machine to the domain, we want to make sure that we add the DNS name of the machine, of the Active Directory 
to this machine because this machine we need to be able to um, do name resolution um, and find Active Directory. So we need to have a DNS which is capable of that and the DNS which was created as part of um, Active Directory uh, domain so that we need to add it, the IP address to it. So I'm going to use a net plan which is a um, preferred way of doing this in um, Ubuntu at least. So on line 24, uh, because I don't know the name of the, the file, so this is the file if you run this ls and that. So this is the file name that, uh, um, this is the file that we need to modify. I, I put that in a variable for convenience and then on line 26, I'm going to do sudo nano and then um, the file, the, the file that we just create, um, we just found out. So this is the file and DNS information is under name services. Um, so I'm going to add um, the, our domain control um, or the DNS, which is installed on the domain control. So it would be 192.168.0.31. In my case, make sure you change that to adhere to whatever your um, IP address for the DNS is. And also on line, uh, over here, this line with disable IPv6, because I don't need IPv6, it's up to you. You don't have to do it, but um, I don't need it. So I'm, I'm gonna dis disable IPv6. So let's go ahead and save that. And then we need to, to actually apply to, for these changes to take place. So sudo net plan apply, let's go ahead and do that. And that's done. Let's go ahead and clear this. And then on line 30, this is a good time now to rename our machine. Um, again, this is the old, um, the old name added the suffix of the domain. So let's go ahead and do that and we can verify that. And we can see that this is the old name dot acme dot pri. Okay. Now, uh, we want to make sure that uh, we can actually discover the, the domain. Um, so that is realm discover line 34 or uh, realm discover acme.pri. So let's go ahead and done that. Just, this is for ensure that we are actually able to connect to Active Directory before joining. So let's go ahead and done that. And we can see that this was successful. We got some information such as realm. Um, realm basically is the uh, Kerberos authority, in this case, is our active domain uh, or AD, active directory uh, domain. And then these are the software that we required in order to um, install um, or join active directory, which we already installed. So let's go ahead and clear those. And then on line 36, finally, we are now ready to join the domain. So the command is sudo realm join dash dash user equal to administrator. So this is the administrator on the domain. So this is the domain administrator. And then this is the name of the domain, which is admin.pri. And minus V means uh, verbose, give us more information and show us what you're doing as part of this join. So let's go ahead and now I need to put in my password. This is domain password. And then it goes through the process and installs configures what this needs to be configured and that's it. So it's really very easy nowadays. Uh, it previously used to be very difficult, but now over the years that made that, they made it very easy. So let's go ahead and clear that. And then on line 38, realm, uh, sudo realm list. So basically um, this is the AD that we joined. Again, this is the acme.pri. It's kind of a verification that we were able to join um, the Active Directory. On line 41, sudo pam dash auth dash update. So uh, we want to make sure that when the um, new, when the Active Directory users are logged into the machine, uh, home directory uh, will be created for them. Because if we don't do that, then uh, no, they won't have any home directory. Because Linux doesn't really know anything about Active Directory um, out of the box. So we need to run this. So let's go ahead and run that. And it prompts, prompts us with some information. 
So PAM stands for Pluggable Authentication Modules. And it manages things such as authentication, authorization, password changing, and so on. In this case, we are really more interested in um, creating the um, home directory for our users. So if you scroll down, um, this is the one that we want. Create a name directory on a login. So by default, uh, the first thing that you run is probably is disabled. So click on the space bar and that will enable that. So make sure that's enabled and click on OK, and we are good to go now. All right, so what we could do is now do some tests. For instance, on line 43, um, ID administrator uh, at acme.pri. So you, you probably you may be familiar with ID. So this is when you run uh, ID and a, a login um, on Linux, it gives you some information like what groups the user belongs to. But now, since we are um, joined Active Directory, we can actually now run uh, the command against Active Directory username. So id administrator.acme.pri. When you run this, it actually connects to Active Directory and gives this information that we provided. So what groups it belongs to, for instance, the domain username and domain admin. So this user belongs to those groups. On line 46, um, if you want to lock down your machine. Um, so by default, when you join uh, a Linux machine to Active Directory, um, uh, Windows is the same thing. All the uh, users have access to the machine. They can log in. But if you want to lock it down, you can, uh, you can do so. You can create um, a, a group in Active Directory or use a built-in group such as domain admins in this case, and you can lock in um, access are only, in this case, if we run this, only the, uh, the uh, domain admins will have access to this machine. So nobody else will be able to log into this machine. On line 49, we want to add the administrator, the domain administrator to the sudo group. So let's go ahead and do that. So the, uh, the, um, the domain admin will also have, will be um, a local administrator on the Linux machine. Let's go ahead and run that. Um, this is already part of that because I kind of run that before recording this, so that user is already um, belong to that group. Okay, we can then verify that uh, on line 51 group uh, or grep minus w sudo and etc. group. So let's go ahead and run that and we'll see that Gary and administrator that acting.pri, they have sudo access to uh, this machine. Now on line um, 54, we can actually now use our Active Directory account to SSH to this the same machine. So this is the IP address of the same machine that, uh, that I kind of saved at the beginning of the uh, recording. So let's go ahead and run that. Now I can, um, you see now that prompted administrator at acme.pri, so I can use my AD password to log in. And that's it, I'm in. So as you can see, administrator at, PR, um, at acme.pri, I'm logging. Um, I can verify again, who am I? And again, this verifies that I am actually here. And if I look at um, the home directory, you'll see that it uh, automatically generates, uh, when I logged in, it also created a home directory for me. So th this is, uh, as you can see, it's pretty simple nowadays to join um, uh, a Linux machine to your Active Directory. Now you can use Active Directory users and groups to manage your security, um, access to files and services. To remove a computer from the domain, we can run this command on line 57, sudo realm lib and domain name dash dash user equal to administrator. When you run that, it will prompt you with uh, for the password for the administrator, that is administrator on the domain, and then we can uh, remove a computer from the domain. Uh, let's check a couple of things before we leave. First of all, uh, we know that the, our computer was added to Active Directory. We can also verify we are now inside Active Directory. 
uh, under computers, if we refresh, you'll see that now our computer, which is Ubuntu VM, this one um, is also uh, show up over here. Uh, one more check also in the DNS, we'll see that right now if I refresh the records here and we will see that Ubuntu VM and that is uh, the full name is also um, registered and also if I refresh over here which is a reverse name lookout, this is the IP address of our computer as you can see this is the computer name. So once as part of the computer uh, domain, domain join, obviously the computer will be added to the Active Directory, uh, but also it um, updates the DNS records for that computer. Okay, that's it for this video. I hope you uh, find it useful. Thank you so much and hope to see you soon. Bye.